Yes, I guess you would pronounce it in Swedish. Well, in English, in Swedish, it would be Samuel Irenius. And um, I'm the I'm founder of RESCore and the developer of the Rescate IO project. So during this talk, hopefully I will stay within 15 minutes. I will show you how you can build a REST and real-time API uh, using messaging um, and in particular using NUTs. So I'll get started right away. Um, let's assume, well, let's see if I can, now let's assume you have something like this. You have your NUT server there and uh, you have your services and everything is working fine. You are doing the messaging and it's fast and reliable and everything you, that you've heard about uh, so far. And then you also have uh, your clients, your web clients or perhaps your mobile clients or whatever clients you have. And you would like to give them some way of accessing your services, like not, not maybe accessing all of your internals, mind you, you seldom want to do that, but uh, a way to expose at least the selected parts in an API that is secure and that you have control over. And this is where RESCate comes in. Uh, so RESCate is a, a, an API gateway, a real-time API gateway. And with real-time, I mean, apart from doing the rest stuff it can also keep track on when ch things changes among your services when data changes and it can uh, update the clients in real time to make sure they are synchronized with the services and it's uh, doing this using messaging so yeah i will be showing you how to do this mainly with live coding and for that, we will be using Go. This is uh, my little Go Rescate gopher here with his nuts toolbox. And I'm using Go because uh, it has a fairly simple syntax. So even though you don't know Go, I think you will understand what's going on. And also both nuts, server and uh, Rescate is written in Go. I mean, it's a highly performed language. And also I have a crush on the language. Basically, I love it. So let's use Go for this. Um, first thing I want to do is to install it. And uh, when I say install it, I mean install Rescate and Nuts. And the easiest way to do that is go to the Rescate.io website. This is where the project exists. And this is where you find all the resources for it. And um, on the front page here, you can find uh, some Docker commands. So we will install it using Docker. And um, you have it as binaries as well, or you can compile the Go source code because it's MIT license on GitHub. Um, so I'll just paste them right here, the Docker commands. It creates a network and it creates the NUT server and it starts the rest gate. The rest gate is also a very small image, even smaller than NUT server. I think it's seven megabytes, while well, NUTS is up to 10 now, something like that. Anyway, install, configured, everything is up and running. You don't have to configure it more than that. So let's start coding. Uh, let's open uh, the coder of your choice. In my case, it's VS Code. And I'll start with, by just creating the Go file here and go into Zen mode. First thing we do, oh, let's see if live coding works. I never done this before. Uh, first, we just create package main. That's just how you write and go. Um, and we want to import a library for this. Um, and you don't have to do it. You can just um, um, start uh, connecting directly with to NUT server and uh, sending the messages using the protocol that is described on the website. But it's easy to use a library because then, well, obviously you will um, not have to implement the protocol that Rescate understands. It's a simple JSON-based protocol, but uh, it's still it's far easier to use a library. There we have the library. Uh, we start create our main function. This is the entry point for a Go application. And here we want to well, start by creating a service. A new service. 
and we should give it a name. This name will be basically the, uh, the namespace for this service. Uh, if you think about REST, it would be sort of like the first um, part of the URL. We'll call this demo, so it will be slash demo slash something. Next thing we want to do is to add some handler, like add a resource that we want to serve. And here we can like uh, write the name of the resource. It could be like user and then we can use wildcard and stuff like that. Um, so it, but in my case, I will just call it model. And uh, so it would be slash demo slash model. And uh, then we are going to start making the handler functions, the functions that are taking the requests, sent to the nuts and responding. The first thing we want to take and respond to is the get handler. And in this particular case, I will take a model, basically means a JSON object. Mm -hmm. And that, then we create a callback function and it will take a model request. There we go. And what we want to do with this request is respond with the data for this model. I don't have one, so I'll just create an anonymous struct. And let's create a property here. So string property, we can encode the key to JSON, call it message. And um, the message can be Oh, uh, let's keep it classic, uh, world, there we go. Great, we have our get handler. And there is one more thing we need to do. With Restgate, access is given or granted explicitly. So every resource needs to have an access handler. And that is a separate request that uh, Restgate is going to send to NAT server and that we need to handle. Because it's a separate request, we could do it on a completely separate service. So you can have a service centralized on doing only the access handling, like uh, granting access to different resources. But in our case, we don't have one. So we do the access handler here in this service. And I will, here you can have a callback function, you can check the tokens and whatever you want to. But in my case, I will just go with a pre-made access uh, granted, which basically means everyone gets access to this. So we have our handler there. And the last thing we need to do is uh, listen and serve. So what I do here is I basically tell it where we have our NAT server. Um, as Derek was talking about, you don't really have to care about where ResGate is or whatever, you just need to know where the NAT server is and connect to it. There we go. I think our service is ready. So um, let's go back to our command line here. Um, give back my prompt. Uh, we see we can have the, we have the go file there. So I'll just do go run dot to compile and run it. And um, there we go, up and running, connected to nuts, everything is working, maybe. Uh, Restgate is listening on 8080. So if this we've done it correctly, we should be able to just open a, um, a connect to local host here, 8080, and uh, Restgate will by default put every REST API thing under API, you can configure that. And demos like, well, you see, um, I've been typing this already. And there we go. Cool. We have our REST API written with messaging. And, and that is good. But the awesome thing with this is not really the REST API. I mean, you can do that with normal HTTP if you would like to. Uh, the cool thing is the real time part. And in order to get real time, we cannot just use HTTP like we are doing here. So instead, I'll open up another browser tab and I will go to Restgate IO Viewer. You can find that under the Restgate website under resources. And the viewer is a simple application that basically it connects using WebSocket to your 
a local host REST gate here at 8080 and uh, allows us to type in the resource that we want to see. In our case, it was demo model. And there we have it. And uh, the difference from this compared to, well, the HTTP way is that here it's connecting using WebSocket and it fetches it using WebSocket and it starts subscribing to this data and ResGate knows that now we have a client that's interested in this data. So uh, how do we change it? It's static data. Well, it's not so static if we go back and change it. So let's change it. Hello, nuts. Um, can even, let's add some property as well. Um, ooh. 42, I've heard, is a good number. There we go. We changed the data somehow. And um, normally you have a database and you interface with a database. Basically, you can use any sort of database you want to. There we go. We go back to our application. We stop the service that we were running and uh, we compile it and run it again. And take a look now on the right side of the screen on the message as I press enter now. It compiles and it runs. And as you can see, it updates in real time as soon as the service starts. Pretty nifty. And as I said, this is a simple example. Um, so normally you would connect, and you have examples for that as well on the, uh, on the website. Normally you would uh, have it uh, interfacing with a database and you can use any database and you propagate the changes up and it sends these messages on the NUT server. So that was the live coding part that I was going to show. Um, I wouldn't wanted to show more, but I didn't feel I have time. Uh, so instead of showing more code, I'll just do some quick pointers on uh, some of the features with ResGate. Starting with real time. Well, that one we've already seen. Uh, so everything can update in real time. And uh, yeah. We have a check on that one, no problem. Access control, uh, yeah, you've seen, well, you haven't seen, I did just access granted there, but uh, you have full access control to all the resources and you can uh, use any sort of uh, or authorization or, or authentication, I would like to say, um, like JVTs or passwords or whatever, Google authentication, or use whatever you want to, you do a service that handles that. Um, and also because of the splitting of uh, get requests and access requests, you can also have access handled by a separate service, as I mentioned. So check on that one. Uh, caching. Um, well, every API gateway does caching in some sense. Uh, what this does different is that this cache is updated in real time. Both that, but ResGate will understand that uh, every time the data changes in among the services, ResGate can update its own cache if it has it in there. there. So it will keep the cache updated and sync in real time. So it will never go stale. And because of the separation of access and get, basically if you have thousands of uh, clients wanting to have this model data, you only have to get it once. Uh, and uh, the, all the other 999, you can just do, they will just do, confirm the access to it. And then Resky can serve it from the cache because the cache is always updated. So it's big check on that one. Um, and it, that will take off a lot of stress from your services normally. Uh, queries, well, I added it here. I have an example for this as well. Like if you want to do queries where you fetch, for example, for pagination, or you do searches or filtering of data, and you want to display the results, and you want that result to be updated in real time. Maybe you are doing queries against a stock market uh, database, and you want to see the top 10 uh, traded stocks. Well, you want that updated in real time, and you can do that as well. Um, check. Um, active community. Um, no, sorry guys, uh, and we do not have that. Uh, the problem is, or where ResKit is at now is that it's a fairly new project. It's been around for um, a year or two, 
and it started to get into production in different places around the world. And uh, I've been focusing mainly on the Swedish companies using it, but it's mature enough. So I think it's time for me to reach out to you guys, uh, to the nuts community and say, well, it's ready to be handle a broader user base and uh, feel free to try it out. See if it works for you. Does it solve something for you? Uh, does it work? Does it handle as it promises? And uh, do a proof of concept. And uh, if it does, start sharing it with others. So that's basically my reach out to you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, that was my presentation. A little bit shorter, I think, than most. Um, and uh, yeah, you have my contact information there. And I love talking about this. So if anyone is interested, also after this talk, to hear more about it or wanting me to talk about this or present it for someone else and so on, I'm happy to do that. So just take my information. I think we have a few more minutes as well for questions. But um, if you have one, otherwise we'll take it at the end. I will try to stay awake. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Samuel. I appreciate it. There are a couple questions here. Uh, the first one is, uh, Restgate, does Restgate also support SSE, server send events? No. Restgate does not use service aid events. It uses WebSocket for the real-time thing. Um, during our creation, when I was creating Restgate and um, setting up the protocol, uh, I decided to go with the WebSocket because well, we could use service side event with HTTP2 and so on, but, but we didn't go that path. So it doesn't do a uh, service side events. No, it uses WebSocket for, uh, for their real time. Okay, we have one more question. There's a long one, so I'm gonna break it up into pieces. Um, have you considered or are there plans to have nested resources that are not automatically embedded, allowing on-demand retrieval? Oh, sorry. Where did you have that question so I could read it? It's in the chat. So if you uh, go down to your Q&A button on uh, your Zoom. Yep. Not on uh, the presentation. It's on the Zoom part. Oh, well, where did my Zoom go? I'd probably have to do um, stop sharing my screen to see it. No, there. I have found it. We can to From have Greg? Resources. They are not automatically embedded. Uh, Using REST client, when you get a resource, you get all the nested resources for deeply nested. Well, I haven't considered it. I, I would say that if you do, this is a, if you, for example, uh, tie uh, resources together, you can have links. Well, one resource links to another resource. So when Restgate fetches the parent resource, it will also automatically fetch all the children before uh, ending up with a uh, ending up sending the data back to the client. And for this, uh, I would say, I haven't considered doing it this way. I would rather say, uh, if you are, you don't want to fetch all the data at once, you should probably, instead of having a reference link that Rescue automatically uh, follows, you would have just a simple, uh, uh, simple resource ID string that the client itself can choose to fetch if it wants to. So that is uh, how, we, I, how I would recommend to solve that problem. 